Ah, okay, now in this section uh, of river processes lesson two, uh, we're going to look at things like um, the river profile. So looking at river profile, after that, we're going to look at um, the work of a river. So look at river profile and the work of a river in this section. So quickly, um, we have the long profile of a river and we look at the long profile and we look at the cross profile. Now, when looking at the long profile of a river, it's um, the features or the characteristics or the changes that occur uh, as the river moves from the source, which is the point where it starts from, which is usually a highland region. As it moves from there to the mouth of the river, which is usually um, into a sea or a lake. Now, what are those things that happen? Now, you find out that the long profile of a river shows the changes in the river gradient. Um, so, as the river moves from a highland region, which is usually a steep, a steep slope, to a gentle slope, um, which is from source to mouth. So, the first thing you need to know is, this part here, there are three courses. So we have the upper course, the middle course, and the lower course. Now, each of them have different features and um, different characteristics. So when we look at the short profile or the cross profile, we'll now be able to see truly how the pictures are. But the basic thing you need to know is at this point, there is a highland region. The water tend to flow downwards like this um, because from a highland downwards. So, when it flows downward in this pattern, you find out that what you have there is referred to as a vertical erosion. Vertical erosion. But when it gets to this point that is a little bit flat, then here you cannot have things like a lateral erosion. So this also helps to show some of the features that can be found within this um, river profile. So you have things like waterfall, um, tributaries, uh, smaller river joining the larger one. Where two river meet here is a confluence. You have Minders, Oxbow Lake, floodplain deltas. So we're going to look at how all those features are formed. Now, but you need to know this. I've seen it in past papers. River characteristics and changes from the source to the mouth. So depth. Remember, we looked at the characteristics of a river. If you don't know what that is, watch the lesson one video. So the depth becomes deeper from the source to the mouth. Then the width becomes wider from the source to the mouth. The speed of flow becomes faster as it moves from the source to the mouth. Then the gradient becomes more gentle from steep to gentle as it moves from source to the mouth. Okay. Now the cross profile. Now what cross profile means is, is this. Now, when you pick this river at this lower course, and I decide to check how it looks like across the river within the width of that river, between the two uh, uh, banks, let's say from A to B, what I'm trying to do is looking at the cross profile. So now we're going to look at the cross profile of an upper course, the cross profile of a middle course, and the cross profile of a lower course, and the characteristics of the river at this different point. So, the cross profile of a river are cross sections from one bank to another, just like I, as, as I just showed you in, in the previous slide. Now, so cross profiles of the upper, middle, and lower course shows changes in the river channel. So, the upper course characteristics include things like it is shallow, that means it's not deep. Remember here, we say as it moves, it gets deeper. So, you know that here, we tend to be shallow why this point will be the deepest obviously so now the upper course which is this um, you find out that it is shallow it has steep slopes um, it is usually also very narrow it has low velocity that's the speed of flow is low then it has large bed load that's the rocks particles that are being carried by the river is quite large at the upper course then it has a rough channel because it has not, once, once it goes through erosion, then you find out that it becomes smoother. But at this stage, it's still very rough. 
it has high level of friction uh, because the channel is rough you expect that the friction will be high obviously it has vertical erosion I stated that earlier so when you move from there to the middle course if the middle course is deeper than the upper cross channel it, it it has gentle valley side so it's more gentle it has greater velocity than the upper course obviously material in the river decrease in size it becomes the bed becomes smoother because it has undergone through the process of erosion um it has lower level of friction than the upper course because it's smoother now obviously then what you have here is lateral erosion remember the water will be moving vertically here while here it's moving um in a lateral form then the lower course usually it will be deeper than the middle course it has flat flood plains here is flat flood plains um, it has it is wider it has greater velocity than the middle course and uh, the material carried are mainly sediment and alluvium deposit um, it has a smooth channel bend bed so it has the lowest friction and what happened here more is deposition so here you have uh, erosion vertical lateral here too is lateral erosion but also materials are majorly deposited within that area okay so reasons why the flow of a river varies during the year these are past papers uh, that you can't find in a textbook so when you have reasons why the flow of river varies during the year now one of the reasons is when you have variation in the amount of rainfall when the amount of rainfall differs during the year you expect that the flow of water will also varies now the intensity how heavy the rainfall is during the year also differs then heavy and more intense precipitation lead to more surface runoff so this is like a development to that point now variation in temperature and evaporation will also determine how water flow during the year now different amount of moisture lost to evaporation and evapotranspiration and degree to which the ground is saturated we determine how water flow during the year the meaning of saturation i think we covered it in lesson one now glaciers ice snow melts could cause higher level in the spring and more extraction of water in summer so this will also affect how water flow during the year now lastly for this lesson two we'll look at the work of a river erosional process we we'll look at transportational process and we'll look at depositional process of a river now erosional process referred to as the has so has here means hydraulic action abrasion attrition and solution we we'll look at that next uh, then this we we'll look at um, the three t3s so t3s that's test the t traction sortation solution and um, suspension these are the three ways in which a river transport materials so now quickly uh, erosion now processes i said we call it the horse so starting with the first age h which is hydraulic action it has to do with the power or the force of moving water the force of water we what wear away which when here means it will break it will break away bed and bank um, releasing air uh, compressed in the cracks of rocks so making it break into smaller pieces then let's move to the next a here which is either abrasion abrasion can also be called corrosion take note because in some question that we ask you about corrosion uh, that won't mention abrasion <laughs> so you need to know the truth so abrasion here is materials uh, carried by the river grinds the bed and bank like um, sandpaper when it when the materials carried inside the river tend to brush the bed and the bank and uh, to erode um, materials that are there then next is attrition so if you look at attrition is when load um, load reduce in size uh, and particles so when the materials carried tend to hit each other um, usually as a result of vertical erosion so as they're hitting each other they tend to break into smaller pieces that is attrition then corrosion or solution is when rock dissolved by chemical reaction so the water dissolves certain types of rocks um, rocks like limestone shales chalk can easily dissolve in water and be carried away that's um, corrosion or solution so you need to know that then lastly i said is the test so t3s um, so starting with the first t which is traction 
in terms of a river transportation process. So this is the process through which materials are moved across the riverbed. So you have large boulders move or rolled along the bed. So that is traction when you have large materials roll along the bed. Then saltation is when stones um, bounce along the bed like leapfrog, they jump, they bounce along the bed of a river as the water moves. Then um, the next S will be materials dissolved in water and carried away, that's solution. Then suspension is when light materials are carried within. So take note, uh, the word here within is very important, light materials carried within the river. Then lastly here is deposition process. Now reasons for deposition include uh, why would the materials carried by the river begin to deposit is when the speed of flow reduces. When the load carried by the river is too heavy, then it tends to deposit it. When you have still water, still water is water that is not moving. So if the water is not moving, obviously it will deposit its material. Then flocculation or salt water makes them sink. So flocculation is um, um, when there is a lot of salt uh, mixed with fresh water. So in that situation, you find out that the material is carried by the river will tend to sink and deposit so these are the reasons for deposition you need to know it because when we begin to look at river futures um, these things are very important the next is um, areas where deposition occur within a river now deposition occur in deltas deposition occurs in levis and uh, deposition occur in flood plains it occur in the mouth of a river it occur at the uh, uh, inner bend of mindas uh, that's it. So inner bend of Mindus, materials deposit, lower cost material deposit, floodplain material deposit, levis material deposit, deltas material deposit. So when we're going to look at the formation of these are all river features. When we're going to look at the formation of these river features, you now see how deposition leads to their formation. So thank you. See you in lesson three, where we're going to look at river processes and landforms.